Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the NoSQL injection. We'll also uh, look at the tools and techniques and payloads and how do you fuzz the NoSQL database. So please hit the thumbs up button uh, on this video if you like this and, and don't forget to follow us on the Facebook. Alright, so let's look at like what is NoSQL and, and the core difference between the SQL and the NoSQL database are like one of the differences authentication no sql does not come with authentication by default also the authorization uh, pretty much like you know once you give access to someone to the no sql database they have access to everything it's not like sql where you can authorize only users to access certain things then there is also an auditing issue so uh, you cannot like you have to configure the auditing it doesn't come by default with the auditing you might have to like you know uh, install the proxies uh, to in, uh, to get the logging features and then encryption is as well uh, not all the database come with encryption however in today's demo we're gonna see one of the uh, most popular database and then we'll see how do you exploit that now if you look at this uh, ranking I I've taken this uh, as of June 2021 Oracle MySQL SQL Server are like you know pretty much on top three list of the uh, database used worldwide however if you also see that there are usage of MongoDB, IBM DB2, Redis, Elasticsearch, SQLite and Microsoft Access so uh, MongoDB is one of the example of NoSQL uh, database. So make sure, uh, like you know, uh, you do understand what the difference is. I I'm gonna talk talk to you, like why MongoDB. It's not a traditional SQL uh, database because it's using a JSON language. So for example, if you are using any of the SQL database. Uh, you would just type a query uh, like you know select star from uh, users where this is equal to this however if you want to query mongodb you have to use actually json query to do that uh, don't worry if you don't understand right now i'll show you the demo how this actually actually works uh one other uh like you know major difference it's the mongodb uses the dynamic schema so uh, in the traditional like in the sql database you have to first define the schema and then you can uh, like you know based on the schema definition you can insert the data however in the no sql you it's a dynamic schema so you can uh, like you know expand it uh, as 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 many uh, way you can like because it's a, it's using the json query so if you need to expand a few columns rows after uh, it's actually no not rows and columns but just to describe if you want to expand your database or schema you can easily do that dynamically without uh, you have to worry about that so why the NoSQL injection is very much uh, like you know critical for us. So now if you imagine um, whenever you are using JavaScript, uh, there is always possibility of having like you know JavaScript injection, cross site scripting sort of vulnerability. We have so many uh, programming languages in the front end where you can use the JavaScript like Angular JS. Uh, so you have J JavaScript in the front end. Of course, in the back end, uh, also you can use the same JavaScript. So you can also define, like, you know, uh, develop your application in the back end using the JavaScript. And now, if you're using the NoSQL, the data layer itself is also a JavaScript. So now you can imagine the entire stack of the application is built up JavaScript, which is uh, very, very good actually. But then also, it's very, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, prone to vulnerabilities. So you have to make sure when you're when you're developing these applications, you are you're taking all the measures like parameter square input validation and stuff like that but if we if we have to see uh, the main difference between the SQL and NoSQL so as I said like SQL database is relational right it has like rows and columns while NoSQL is key and value pair and and here like it's good for uh, like NoSQL is not good for very complex application it's very easy uh, to manage like you know for very straightforward applications where you know what the data type is uh, however uh, for the more complex and and uh, big applications we would still prefer the SQL but you would still see like sometimes you will you'll come across this sort of like you know uh, no SQL database because the developer might say we are using MongoDB so the traditional SQL injection might not work so that's where you would need to uh, do the no SQL injection so here's the quick example in the SQL you'll you'll do like select star from users where name is equal to John if you want to apply the same query to NoSQL, you do db.users.find name 
and then John. So you could see this is actually in the JSON format. How you do that? Uh, payload is uh, same as what we would see in the SQL injection. So instead of where directly, we will use dollar where operations. Uh, here you can also use like operators such as uh, like you know as, as I described here NE which is not equal to one and and so whenever you want to have like you know false condition you can also do not equal you cannot just simply use any uh, standard characters but uh, for greater than for example you have to use GT and, and keywords like that so here are the different fuzzing techniques you can use so when you come across like the application is using uh, no uh, no sql then then you can insert these characters for like json um, then to cause the syntax error right uh, you would use this uh, single quote double quotes forward slash curly passes then logic you can insert like one is is equal to equal to one or not equal to one then you can uh, comment out rest of the statements like we are doing in the SQL injection Then the operators as I said like greater than less than not equal to and regex and exist and where so you can use these operations uh, like uh, to query uh, the database and then uh, you can also do like a MongoDB specific commands which is get collection names so in the SQL we are using like version or or uh, users and, and stuff like built-in commands so you can use the same commands once you confirm the SQL injection but so how do you exploit the SQL injection so there, are, there are, we, we're gonna take the same approach like we do for any other SQL injection first we'll have to find the valid request where we can inject then we're gonna try and cause a syntax error once we do that we will modify the query with the operators like we saw in the earlier slide then we'll send the logic logic to get multiple records so like we'll do not equal to equal equal to and, and bypass the logic and then lastly we'll inject the json or javascript to get our uh, data so what are the tools uh, you can use uh, for exploiting uh, just like sql map we also have a no sql map uh, probably I'll, I'll do a different session just to explore this tool then of course you can use the Burp Suite Pro and OASAP which has the built-in scanner. You can use the scanner as well as they also have a payloads. Uh, you can also uh, import the fuzzing uh, keywords that we I just showed you. So you can import that into text file and, and, and into the Burp Suite and then fuzzing uh, fuzz the database. And then you can also use the NoSQL exploitation framework. Uh, there is also an interesting framework. Request looks like for the NoSQL and, and how do you exploit in the real world application. So this is our uh, application which is like a basic authentication uh, requirement and in the backend it's using actually the Mongo database uh, for retrieving or comparing the username and password. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start with the admin admin as username password and let's see if we're gonna bypass that doesn't work then uh, traditionally we'll start with like you know single quote and see uh, if it gives us any error messages but because it's not using the SQL it's not it's not giving us the error messages now uh, let's see if we want we let's capture this request in the bar suite and, and try different techniques to bypass right so, so in this one what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna insert our operator which is called not equal to admin okay and as you can see uh, now we enter into the application so what we actually did was we entered not equal to so username is equal to admin however password is not equal to admin so that there is a user with the admin username but the password could be anything so we made the query like you know we made sure the query goes through because uh, any password but admin password should work to allow us to log in the next uh, step we have in here is there is a there is a invoice uh, a retrieve a function. So by last name you can you can retrieve the invoice. So for example, it says uh, let's say I say a uh, Smith. So if we query here, uh, we got one uh, data of the invoice. Invoice. However, we need multiple data. So how are you gonna do that? Like uh, we want to retrieve information for all the invoices from the database of course it's possible that we gather all the last name possible last name and, and first through it however if we attempt in a way that i uh, will will say to the application just give us everything which is equal to uh which is not equal to blank as a last name 
then it's gonna retrieve all the data from the database so let's attempt that so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna intercept the request I think uh, this should be the right query I think I, I made a mistake by uh, having the square bracket but yeah we should put the curly braces here and then uh, not equal to operator in, within the double quotes and the value of it should be blank so whenever it finds the field last name but the value is not equal to blank it's gonna give us the records so now if we go back to our uh, system here and we can see we did get the results for all the last name instead of just Smith so that is how typical uh, as NoSQL injection works uh, validation uh, you just need to make sure uh, it's using the primary query input validation and, and uh, like pretty much same thing what we have seen uh, for the SQL injection uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely see you guys next week. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow us on the Facebook and I'll see you all next week. Thank you.